Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jay Rome, and today we are going to go over minting assets on Stellar. Raf and I, we do keep a good eye on the YouTube comments. Some of them are hilarious, making fun of Raf's mustache, uh, but some of them come in with suggestions for new videos. And that's what this was. This came in from our friend Dog Breath, who said he wanted a video over creating custom tokens on Stellar, which is dead simple. So today we are going to be doing that on the test network. If we were to be doing this on the public network, you would need roughly four XLM to do it. Today's prices, that's less than 40 cents. Incredibly cheap to mint your own custom token on Stellar. Let's check it out. All right, guys, so we're going to be working in the Stellar laboratory for this. No special wallet or anything is needed for this. So go ahead and load up laboratory.stellar.org. And you're going to want to make sure that you are on the test network. So click on test, make sure that's highlighted at the top. And the first thing we need to do are create and fund our two accounts, the issuer and the dist distribution account. So let's click on create account and we're going to generate one key pair. And we're going to save this. This is going to be our issuer. And then we're going to generate a second one and this will be our distribution account. And we'll save that. And the test network has this handy tool here called the FriendBot, which will fund our account with 10,000 lumens so we can do some transactions. So we will go ahead and do that account and also activate the issuing account. And then we'll be ready to start building transactions. All right, so both of those are funded. So the next thing we need to do is we need to set up a trust line to the asset we are going to create at the distribution account so that it can hold that asset when we mint it. So let's go ahead and build that transaction. This is going to be, once again, on the distribution account. So grab that key, put it in the source account, use the purple button to get the next sequence number. And the operation type will be change trust. And here's where we're going to set up the asset code for the asset we want to mint. So in my case, I am going to name it JROME. And the issuer is going to be the key of that first account that we created. So we put that there, come to the bottom, click sign in transaction signer. Then we're going to scroll down and paste in the secret key. And submit it. So there we go. Now our distribution account has a trust line open to the asset that we want to mint. So the next step will be to actually mint the token from the issuing account. So let's build another transaction and this time from the issuing account. So grab that key, get the next sequence number. And the operation we want this time is just a normal payment. The destination is we're going to mint these to our distribution account. So we're going to put that key in the destination. In the asset, we named it JROME. And we are the issuer. So we're going to go ahead and put our key in there. For the amount that we're going to mint, we will do 1 million JROMES. And then come down, get to the next page, and sign it with the issuing account and submit it. And this payment operation is going to magically mint our JROME tokens. There we go. So now let's go in our distribution account, grab that key. We're gonna click on explore endpoints, accounts, single account, and paste in the public key of our distribution account. And here we can check the balances on the account and sure enough, we have 1 million of our JROME token. So it really is as quick and as simple as that. You could stop right here and you would have 1 million JROME tokens minted that the distribution accounts could set up sell offers, send you know some to a, a friend, however you want to work it. But at this point, you have minted an asset. It's extremely, extremely simple. So next I'm gonna go over a alternate way 
to kind of what I would call mint on demand. And then we're gonna go through locking that account. So the first thing, let's go ahead and build a new transaction. And so what we're going to do here is use the issuing account. And instead of just sending a lump sum minting 1 million at a time, what we can do is set up a sell offer for our asset against, let's say USDC, maybe you could say, I want to sell a million of these at one USDC each or against XLM. And then as people take that offer, they're essentially minted into existence as people take that sell offer. So I'll walk you through that here. So we're gonna grab the public key of the issuer, paste that in there, get the next sequence number. And the operation we are going to do is manage sell offer. We're going to set up a new sell offer. We are going to be selling our JROME token to which we are the issuer. And for simplicity's sake, let's pair it against XLM, which is the native asset. So we're selling JROME, buying native asset XLM. And we will do a million, just like we did that we minted to our distribution account. This time, we will have a sell offer for a million JROME to XLM. So the next thing we have to do is set our price. And for simplicity's sake, we will sell them one to one. One XLM is worth one JROME. Offer ID, we need to put a zero to create a new sell offer. And then we're ready to submit this. Got it signed with our secret key. We will submit that transaction. And there we go. We can also go in and check that. We can go into offers, all offers, and then we can get offers for the issuing account. So, so where the seller is this key. And then we can scroll down and see that that account is selling JROME and buying XLM. One million of them in the price. This is, uh, this is a math equation. Uh, you have to go numerator, denominator here, one to one. So that's our ratio. Um, and there you go. So that's a mint on demand. And this is actually the way that USDC on Stellar is done with their USDC, USDC allow. So it's kind of an interesting way to kind of do an ICO. You could set up uh, a sell offer at, you know, one XLM. And then after a month, you take that offer away and then make it two XLM. And so the price kind of increases. But during that time, people can buy as many as they want at that price and it mints them at that point. So the next thing I want to go over, last thing, is locking down the issuing account. So what this does, as you see, I'm able to still interact with the issuing account. So if I wanted, I could mint endless amounts of my JROME token. And if people are buying those, that's not really what you want to be doing. So what we can do is we can show people that there will never be any more JROME token. And we do that by making our private key unable to sign transactions for the account. So let's walk through that real quick. We're going to go back to build transaction and we have our issuing account key here. Get the next sequence number. And then the operation type this time is going to be set options. And we scroll down here to master weight. And by default, the signing weight of your key will be one which means you can sign for any type of transaction. There's actually three different thresholds for different types of transactions. By default, you get one private key. It can sign for any different type of, uh, of transaction. And if you set the master weight to zero, it essentially nullifies that key. So if we do that to our issuing account, that means you can no longer do any transactions from that account. And so that tells people I can't mint any more of these. I can't do anything with that asset anymore. So we're gonna set master weight to zero. And that's the only thing we're gonna do. Go ahead and submit this. And then we will double check our work real quick once we're done. There you go, that's done. So now we can go ahead and view that account and check that the signing weight is in fact zero. So here is the signers 
and you see that our key it now has a weight of zero. And so a lot of people use Stellar Expert. So if you're viewing an asset in Stellar Expert, I'll show you the differences here. So uh, here's the asset um, yield blocks by Script3. And you can see here that it shows issuer account status is unlocked. Now, I don't want you to think that any asset that has it unlocked is a scam or it's bad. There are sometimes there's valid reasons for having that unlocked, which is totally okay. It's just one thing that you can use to show, you know, people can use, you can show trust in your asset. So this is how it looks for yield blocks. And if you click on who actually, the account that issued that token, you can then see that their, their signing weights, which is what this W is, their signing weights still have weight and it. Their thresholds are two. So obviously there's enough signers here to get over any of these thresholds. So this issuer could still mint more tokens if they wanted to. And here's the other way issuer account status is locked. So this is the Aqua token for the Aquarius project. And if we click into the issuer account, you can see that they haven't changed their operation thresholds. This is still default, but under signers, you can see that the weight is zero. So the only signer on that count is basically nullified. This account can do no more. It cannot issue any more Aqua. And that's it guys. It really is that easy. So to recap, we created two accounts. We created the trust line, minted two different ways, and then locked down the account. All of that could be done on the public network for roughly four XLM, which is like 40 cents. Crazy cheap, crazy easy, crazy fast. So I hope you guys liked the video. Drop a comment, let me know what you thought or a suggestion for a new video and like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.